For those of you guys who want to improve your 2K skills and beat all of your opponents, check out the first ever 2K ebook. For only $10, you guys can know some of the most unstoppable and cheesiest plays in NBA 2K20. The link to that ebook will be the first link in the description. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's YBC, and I am back. Bring another video, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys tips and tricks that will help you guys go 12-0 for the brand new Player of the Month card, Galaxy Opal, James Worthy. Before we hop into it and everything, if you guys could do me a real quick favor and drop a like on this video, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Let's see if we can hit the like goal of 520 likes on this video. First and foremost, I am going to be confirming to you guys that Galaxy Opal, James Worthy, is the brand new Player of the Month card. So, when we dive straight into it right here in our collection, go down to the rewards, and you guys go down even more on the bottom to the Unlimited Players of the Month. As you can see right here, for the Unlimited Player of the Month number two, James Worthy is alongside Moses Malone. He is the brand new Player of the Month card for March. Even though this James Worthy card right here is currently not on the Unlimited board in my team, I can confirm to you guys that he is a Player of the Month card from the collection, and I also can confirm to you guys that he is because T2BG, my team dev, did tweet out and say that he is going to be the brand new Player of the Month card in Unlimited. I also do know that he is going to be in the form of a Galaxy Opal because 2KMT Central did tweet out the badges and attributes of the card, which we'll go over very, very shortly. And I also gave us the card art of him as I will put up the card art on the screen. The card art for James Worthy is a massive W. And when we take a look at him right here, guys, he is standing at six foot nine as he is a half small forward, half power forward. Taking a look at the hot zones for him. His hot zones are from pretty much everywhere on the court, except for the three point top of the key and also the three point left and right wings. And when it comes to the badge count, you guys can also see that 2K gave him a grand total of 58 badges, 30 of them being on Hall of Fames and 28 of them being on gold. Now taking a look into the badges that 2K gave him, when it comes to the finishing right here, 2K gave him a total of 11 Hall of Fame finishing and six gold finishing badges. We move along to the shooting ones right here, guys. 2K gave him eight Hall of Fame shootings, Hall of Fame Green Machine, Hall of Fame Flexible Release, Hall of Fame Hot Zone Hunter, Deep Faith, Catch and Shoot, Difficult Shots, Hot Star, and Pick and Popper. He also does come with eight gold badges as well for the shooting. Two of them are Quick Draw and Rain Extender, which as you guys know, those two are like the most important badges in my team. Moving on to the playmaking, 2K gave him four Hall of Fame playmaking badges, which are Dream Shake, Post Bend Tendition, Break Starter, Quick First Step on Hall of Fame, Dimer, and Lob City Passer. Now moving right along to the last portion of badges for defense rebounding, 2K gave him seven defensive slash rebounding Hall of Fames, and 12 golds. As you guys can see for the defensive slash rebounding ones, guys, 2K gave him some really, really good badges. Hall of Fame Clamps, Hall of Fame Intimidator, Hall of Fame Pogo Stick, Hall of Fame Tireless Defender, Golden Protector, Gold Heart Crusher, Gold Interceptor, Gold Rebound Chaser, and Gold Worm, and also guys, Post Move Lockdown Hall of Fame. The badge count for the James Worthy card is really, really good. So now that we went over the badge count of this James Worthy card, it is now time we take a look at the attributes for Worthy, and 2K juiced up the living life out of this James Worthy card. We take a look at the outside scoring first and foremost, he does come with 97 shot close, 95 mid range. 93 pointer and 95 offensive consistency as well as an 88 free throw his athleticism is also great 94 speed 95 vertical 98 stamina and a 90 strength now moving along to the inside scoring attributes 2k also juiced him up here as well as he does come with a 97 driving layup 95 standing dunk 95 driving dunk 97 drop foul and the post attributes are in the mid 90s as we move along now to the playmaking 2k gave him an 87 speed with ball and an 86 ball handle now moving right along to the defensive attributes that 2K gave this worthy card, they're all in the green right here, which means they are juiced up as well. 93 interior defense, 92 perimeter defense, mid 90s for the IQ on defense, 93 lateral quickness, 92 steal, 85 block, and a 95 defensive consistency. And wrap up all, all these attributes, 2K gave him a 96 offensive and a 96 defensive rebound. So all in all, based off of the badges and attributes, this James Worthy card right here looks incredible. There are only two attributes on this James Worthy card that is below an 80, which I believe was his passing vision and pass accuracy. Let me double check that real quick when it came to his playmaking. Yes, guys, pass accuracy and passing vision are the only two attributes that are below an 80 on this card. And honestly, those attributes don't, aren't really that important considering he's a forward and he is not a guard. And on top of that, guys, on top of the great badges and attributes, 2K also gave the pink diamond version of James Worthy the base 11 jump shot, which, as you guys know, is a super cheesy jump shot. So when it comes to this Galaxy Opal James Worthy card, I'm pretty sure he's going to have the exact same cheesy jump shot as well. Major, major W2K. I want to give some props to 2K before I tell you guys the tips real quick. This James Worthy card looks incredible. 
and I'm very glad that 2K made this card incredible because there aren't many cards in 2K that are worth writing for, especially the unlimited players of the month. Moles Malone, guys, let's be honest, is isn't even a top 10 big man in the game. When it came to other players of the month cards as well, guys like Clyde Drexler and Larry Bird and some of the other ones, those cards were only good for like a couple of weeks. But this James Worthy card, guys, is going to be a very good card and definitely a usable card for the next two to three months in my team. So I want to get major props to 2K for making the grind worth it in Unlimited for this next player of the month, for next month in March. So I'm sure a lot of you guys know, in order to get Julius Urban and to get the player of the month card, you do need to go 12 and 0. So with that being said, now it is time for me to help you guys out and give you guys tips and tricks to help you guys go 12 and 0 for this new James Worthy card. I have gone 12-0 every single month in my team pretty easily, guys. I have collected every single player of the month card in my collection. And I also was the $250,000 My Team Tournament qualifier. And I did play in that tournament, guys. Even though I got my butt kicked in that tournament, I still made it, which was a huge accomplishment. So with that being said, guys, the information that I do tell you guys in tips and tricks will help you guys out a ton. So diving straight into it right here, as you can see, this is my official lineup, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can tell that I do run an eight-man rotation. I do run an eight-man lineup. And that is going to be the first lineup tip that I do give you guys, is I recommend you guys do also run an eight-man rotation as well for three reasons. One reason why you guys should run an eight-man rotation instead of a 13-man is because it lowers your overall. As I can see right here, this lineup that I do have is only a 93 overall rated squad. If I were to fill up the bench players, the five bronze players with pink diamonds and opals in my collection, like if I were to fill up these cards with Opal Roy, Opal Ray Allen, Opal Rose, say Pink Diamond Rose Malone and Pink Diamond Larry Bird, my lineup would probably, would probably be close to 99. It would probably be 98 overall. And because I do run an eight-man rotation, it lowers it, which allows me to play up against weaker squads. Instead of me being matched up against a 98 overall rated team, I will now be matched up against a 93 overall rated team because I did lower my lineup. Now, when you guys do use an eight-man rotation, when it comes to the players off the bench, make sure that you guys do fill up every single position with these three cards off the bench. As you can see, I do have Tony Parker, who is a half point guard, half shooting guard. Michael Jordan is a half shooting guard, small forward. Dwight Howard is a half power forward slash center. I do have every single position with these three cards off the bench. Now, in case you guys don't really know what I'm talking about, say, for example, I substitute Dwight Howard and I put Galaxy Opal Brandon Roy in. As you can see, I only have three positions with these three cards. I only have a point guard, shooting guard, and small forward. I don't have a big man, which means my big man, Paul George, and Dave Robinson will be playing the entire game because I don't have a substitution for him off the bench. Now, when it comes to Roy, guys, he's not going to be a card I run because he doesn't fill up every single position off the bench. I do run Dwight Howard for that reason because now when I put in Dwight Howard, he fills up every single position off the bench. And I could substitute Dwight Howard for my big guys, Paul George or Dave Robinson, whenever they get tired. Another reason why I do run an 8-man rotation instead of a 13-man rotation is because of the substitutions. Whenever I run a 13-man rotation, guys, I always feel like 2K always just mix up my substitutions off the bench. Like, I will have 5 guys off my bench from the 6th man to the 10th man, but for some reason, the 11th slash 12th slash 13th man come in for them off the bench for no reason at all. Like, even if I have my substitution on manual, when I sub in 5 and 5 out, sometimes those players who I don't want to play in the 11th and 13th man play off bench which gets me very very annoyed and that's another reason why like i said i run an a-man rotation now the third and final reason why i do run an a-man rotation this one really doesn't have anything to do with the gameplay but it will help you guys out when it comes to budgeting i do save a ton of mt running five players off the bench bronze players instead of opal slash pink diamonds if i were to fill up this bench right here guys with these five bronze players of pink diamonds that is going to be 750 mt towards contracts add on to my total of contracts but because I have bronze players instead of the pink diamond slash opals, I only pay 50 contracts per game for these five bronze players compared to 750 for pink diamond slash opal. So I'm saving 700 MT every single game by running an 8-man rotation instead of a 13. So if I were to play 12 games, guys, with an 8-man rotation instead of a 13-man full pink diamond slash opal team, I will be saving a grand total of 8,400 MT for going 12 and 0. So no matter which line you guys do have, whether it's a full opal team, a full pink diamond team, a full diamond team, unless you guys are 100% confident that you guys can get it done with 13 players, I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys only use eight and use five bronze players off the bench. Moving on to the last lineup tip that I will tell you guys, and that is just simply running with the lineup that you feel comfortable with. Sometimes you might have better players in your collection. Like I have in my collection, the cheesy, 
Pink Diamond point guard LeBron James. But personally, I like running Rex Chapman. I like Rex Chapman better than LeBron James. I feel a lot more comfortable with the release of Rex Chapman rather than LeBron James. I feel a lot more comfortable with Rex Chapman just simply being the floor general of my offense and getting a bucket than LeBron James. You know, sometimes you may have better cards in your collection, but all in all, guys, I just recommend you guys do find a lineup that works for you guys that you guys are just simply comfortable with. Now, the next topic that I'm going to be talking about in this video is I'm going to be telling you guys, in my opinion, the best coach and playbook to use in my team. When it comes to the playbook, guys, as you guys can see, this Portland Trailblazers playbook, in my opinion, is the best playbook to use in my team. I made an ebook on this Portland Trailblazers playbook because of how cheesy and overpowered the plays were in this Portland Trailblazers playbook. So for those of you guys who like running plays a lot, this playbook is definitely the playbook for you. It has by far the best plays in my team. Now, if you guys don't like running plays in my team, you guys are more of the isolation slash pick and roll slash pick and pop type of guy. This Bucks playbook is the playbook for you because this Bucks playbook has five out plays and super cheesy spacing for my team players. So now moving on to the best coach in my team, the coach that I do use is this Amethyst Mike Malone. And personally, I do think that Mike Malone is the best coach in my team. This Mike Malone card right here does cost 15,000 MT. It is a little bit pricey, but like I said, I think that he is the best because when we take a look at the attribute upgrades that Mike Malone gives my players, he gives them plus 4-3 to every single player except for the center and plus 4 perimeter defense. Those two attributes are like probably the most important attributes in my team perimeter defense and three-pointer as well as ball handle guys and speed like all the most important attributes in the game Mike Malone does upgrade to my cards which I think is why Mike Malone is the best coach in my team like a lot of coaches in my team usually give like one or two good attribute upgrades you know like three-pointer ball handle but this man Mike Malone gives like I said everybody pretty much everything you need on a card when it comes to the upgraded attributes so after you guys do find a lineup that works for you guys and you guys use either the Bucks or Trailblazers playbook and you guys also do use Mike Malone as a coach I recommend you guys do go on a freestyle and just simply know the releases of your cards like literally just going to shoot around guys just just start shooting up shots right before you hop into the gameplay guys just start shooting up shots so you guys are familiar with the releases of your players this is what i do every single time before i go 12 and 0 i always go into the shoot around guys with my guys and just simply just green shots from the three-point line mid ranges dribble a little bit just have some fun with my cards you know get familiar with them before i hop into the gameplay because it, it really irritates me when i go into the gameplay and just start missing wide opens and i don't green my shots you know if there's an open shot, I'm going to green it because I practice right before I hop into the gameplay. Exactly what I do now, guys, before I hop into the gameplay, just simply just keep on shooting around with my players so I know their releases. So now that we went over pretty much everything needed before we hop into the gameplay, I'm now going to be telling you guys the best settings for both offensive and defensive in my team. So first and foremost, guys, the offensive setting, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys real quick. There really is just one offensive setting that you guys should change, and that is your freelance. I do recommend you guys do use either the Bucks 2018 or piston snap type of freelance those two are the best freelances to use in my team doesn't matter which one you guys do use i honestly run both just depending on who i play up against usually i do run piston snap though now moving on to the last topic of discussion of this video which is the defensive settings right here i'm not going to be going over the defensive setting that i use that i feel like is the best to use in the entire game more specifically my team though when it comes to the all ball pressure that I do use, I do use Smother for the on-ball pressure, and that is mainly because of the fact that it is kind of like a mini half-court press with Smother. What, what basically happens when you Smother, guys, is that your computer, if you guys play off-ball, I play a little bit off-ball, but not a lot, but basically, guys, the computer just simply comes up to the half-court line and pressures your opponent. And if you guys have players with clamps, gold or Hall of Fame clamps, it's going to be very, very hard for your opponent to get by somebody who's smothering you at the half-court line. Now, when it comes to the off-ball pressure, guys, I highly recommend you guys do use tight. I use tight over deny ball and moderate because if you use moderate, they're going to catch and shoot in your face. It's just 2K20. It's, it's super cheesy to shoot in somebody's face. And deny ball, guys, you can just simply send somebody on a backdoor cut every single time and it will be a bucket. But when it comes to tight, this one right here, guys, you will not, your opponent will not, your opponent will not shoot in your face every single play, and you will also not be backdoored every single play like deny ball. When it comes to force direction, I do leave this one right here on automatic. Personally, force direction doesn't really mean anything for those of you guys who do on ball because this is just more so of, a, of an off ball setting. And if you guys do off ball, use automatic, that's the way to go. It's moving along right here to the on ball screen. I highly recommend you, recommend you guys do go over for on ball screen and on ball screen center, go over. Going under guys will just allow your opponent to just simply shoot in your face every single time. You probably won't get the contest because of the Hall of Fame quick draw. 
go over guys is definitely the way so you guys can get contest on your opponent now when it comes to the hedge i do use catch hedge for both catch hedge regular and catch hedge center when it comes to catch hedge right here guys essentially this right here is going to help you out in order to play multiple type of reads in my team because when your guard goes over on on the center or on the screen excuse me you're going to be using your center most likely who's going to be guarding the pick and you're going to be playing down a little bit you're going to be dropping out a little bit to guard the drive and also guard the roller of the center you're basically just going to be you're basically just going to be reading what your opponent does like if he drives with the point guard that's you to pick up with the catch edge if you if, he, if you see the roller going to the bucket that's your job to get back and guard the roll and try to disrupt the pass to him it just really is all about making the right read with the catch head setting. When it comes to the stay attached right here, guys, we're moving along to stay attached. Leave this on automatic. I don't touch that at all. All ball screen, go over. Don't go under because, like I said, it'll shoot in your face. When it comes to post, guys, leave that on automatic. No one really uses the post. And just leave that right, right there, guys, on automatic. When it comes to double team perimeter and double team post, leave these both on manual. Don't go auto. Don't adjust these because your computer will double team. And it is very annoying when your computer double teams. Leave that on, leave that on manual which means you're gonna be in charge of all double teams. In case you guys are wondering double team button, it is L2 on PS4 and it is LB on the Xbox, Xbox button. Now moving on lastly to the switch rules off ball. I recommend you guys do switch all because sometimes your computer gets kind of confused if you leave this on automatic or if you guys go switch bigs. Just simply switch all in the off ball switch rules. Pre-rotate, leave that on no. I don't like players helping. That's gonna move us on to our last setting right here, guys. For screen help and drive help rules, leave leave both on no. Don't help, just play straight up. As you guys know, in my team, people just help for no reason randomly. Leave these both on no help. So in case you guys didn't miss out on any settings what I did tell you guys about, I will repeat them to you guys. On ball pressure, smother, all ball pressure tight, force direction automatic, on ball screen go over, catch hedge for the hedge, catch hedge also for the catch hedge center, off ball screen center, go over, stay attached, automatic. Off ball screen go over, post automatic, double team perimeter and double team post both on manual. Switch help, off ball, switch all, pre-rotate, no, screen help rules, no help, and drive help rules, no help. So if you guys do everything that I did tell you guys in this video, when it comes to the lineup, the playbook, the coach, the freestyle, the offensive and defensive settings, if you guys do these six things right here, guys, this right here is definitely going to help you guys a ton when it comes to going 12-0 on my team. So that right there, guys, now pretty much can do it for this video right here. If this video has helped you, make sure you guys go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. I did try my absolute best, guys, in this video to help you guys out a ton. I went into deep detail upon everything I possibly could to help you guys improve your game for going 12-0. And like I said earlier, guys, going 12-0 this month, you guys are definitely going to want to go 12-0 for because that James Worthy card, trust me, will be definitely a card worth grinding for. So that right there now is going to do it, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. And as usual, and as always, it's YBC and I'm out. Peace.